going to be too long. It's Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Amen. How many mothers are here today? If you're a mother, please stand up. If you're a mom, and I want you to stand up. Hallelujah. Linda, your mama, stand up. You have spiritual children. Amen. We want to say happy Mother's Day, and you are honored today. This is your day. And um, God bless you. I want to just pray for you a special prayer of anointing on you today for God to bless you. Amen. Come on, everybody else, just raise your hands toward them. Father, we thank you. We praise you for all the mothers, Lord, that are here today. Lord, many, God, have, have children that are grown. Many have small ones. Some have infants. But God, you have given them children. It is your gift to them. And, and Father, thank you, Lord, that, Lord, we may not have been all that we should have been, but, Lord, we can be all that you want us to be now. And so, Father, I pray, God, for all the mothers, for a special blessing upon them today. Lord, give them a special, special visitation of your presence in their life. And let them know when they go through disappointments with children and when they go through different uh, valleys and hills that, God, you're with them. Lord, strengthen them and encourage them, even though sometimes children do not appreciate them. Father, let them know that you appreciate them. And we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. God bless you this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm going to be speaking to this morning on a virtuous woman, a virtuous woman. And I, I want you to know that, um, that my mom was a great mom. And not only was she a great mom, but she was a great cook. And I'll tell you, I still remember some of the old, um, I don't remember the recipes, but I remember all the old meals that uh, we had at our home and, and, uh, I know Joe was a part of that many times because, uh, and I was with his mom, and his mom was very special too. And uh, these are memories that we'll never forget. You'll never forget your mom. Now, I know that sometimes it's been a heartache for some because their moms weren't there, but you know what? Like, like uh, Lisa said, we have Mama Linda here. And, you know, Linda and I had gone to a missions conference one time up in Canada, and a um, um, guy called her right out of the, uh, right out of, out of the, um, Audit, you know the auditorium we were in, and called us up for prayer. and And he said, he said to her, he said, uh, well, he had spoken a word of prophecy that you know my feet would touch many foreign soils. Her, not as much, but because uh, she's a coward and she's fearful and all that stuff, and and you know she doesn't like smells and stuff. But anyway, uh, but said uh, you know I would go more than she would. And he said to her, he says, you'll never have children of your own. Sorry. But you'd have many spiritual children. That was 20-something years ago, 25 years ago. And how true it is. Amen. And so it is a special day um, for his moms. And, you know, we, we never forget our children. And uh, they're special to us. And, and God gives us as gifts. I have many, many children in the Lord. And I thank God for that. Amen? But uh, for those of you who do not know the story behind Mother's Day, how many know the story behind Mother's Day? Mm, nobody really knows. The, uh, well, I'm going to give you the origin of Mother's Day because sometimes, you know, people say, well, it's a tradition, you know, that man made up. But uh, I believe it was something that God instilled. And uh, we're going to see that. So I just want to read something to you here. Mother's Day is now observed by all English-speaking people, and we retell it right now where its humble beginnings started. That frame of often is fleeting in the memories of most men and women short has been brought home once more by the pathetic story of this woman named Anna M. Javis, who is the founder of Mother's Day. Now, it hadn't been for the uh, philanthropic spirit of this of a few Philadelphians who came to her rescue recently, the blind and penniless 83-year-old woman, 
would have been doomed to spend the last months of her life alone in a charity hospital. It was over 60 years ago that Miss Jarvis got the idea of having a day set aside when men and women throughout the nation would pay a special honor to their mothers. Are we on Facebook? We're on live. God bless you. We had a technical issue, but now we're on. God bless all those who are watching by Facebook. We're glad you could join us this morning, and thank God he answered our prayer. That was a quick one, too, wasn't it? Praise God. Uh, Anna Jarvis, Jarvis' own mother, Mrs. Ann Revis Jarvis, had died on the second Sunday in May of 1905, and that is why this particular Sunday has been designated as Mother's Day. It was first celebrated in a, in a tiny church in Grafton, West Virginia, the town where Anna was born. Anna Jarvis was 10 at the time and attended the church with her parents and brothers and sisters. And at age 20, she was graduated from Augusta Female Seminary in Staunton, Virginia, and returned home to teach in the public schools. She also taught with her mother in that Sunday school of Andrews Methodist Church during the time her mother laid plans to set aside a day in honor of mothers of the world, but never lived to see her work completed. There was a move to Philadelphia, and on December 31st, 1902, the father died, and Mrs. Jarvis and her children moved to Philadelphia to live with a son, Claude. And three years later, on May 9th, 1905, Mrs. Jarvis passed away. In 1907, Miss Jarvis invited some friends to her home in Philadelphia to communicate Oh, to commemorate, I'm sorry, the anniversary of her mother's death and announced plans to make a Mother's Day a national observance on the second day in May. Next, Miss Jarvis wrote L.L. Lear, superintendent of Andrews Sunday School, with the suggestion the church celebrate a Mother's Day in honor of her mom. On Sunday, May 10th, 1908, wow, the first Mother's Day, Church service was held at Andrews Church, and two years later, Governor William E. Glasnock of West Virginia officially proclaimed the first Mother's Day. Now, here's something really interesting. Although a sincere devotion and a deep realization of her loss undoubtedly were behind the movement, the real beginning of Mother's Day might be said to go back to the time just after the Civil War when Anna's own mother organized the Union and the Confederate mothers of her little community in effort to get the boys in blue and the boys in gray to be friends again. Isn't that just like a mom, huh? I remember Joe and I a couple of times had some spats here and there, and uh, it was our mothers that you know smacked us in the head and said, "Get right, that's your best friend. Go get, go make things right." Anna carried this memory on. In those early days in Philadelphia, Anna Jarvis paid out her own paid out of her own pocket to have carriages take old people and those who were in invalids to church on Mother's Day. Now remember that was a big thing back then. She bought and gave away hundreds of carnations, the emblem she herself had designated. There were expensive trips abroad to, spend, to spread the custom of Mother's Day in Europe. And Anna wrote personally to editors, ministers, presidents, and even to kings. Gradually, as she got more and more wrapped up in the thing she had created, she lost contact with most of her friends, and her only close companion was uh, Elsa her blind sister, with whom she lived alone in a rambling Philadelphia house, and there were two aging. They were there were two. They were two, there were the two aging women kept the furnishings as they had been during. They had been during their mother's lifetime. The years went by, and Anna's money dwindled, and it was all spent on the cause that seemed to have become her one interest in life. Claude Jarvis, a bachelor brother and a shrewd businessman thought that he had left both his sisters well provided for in his will, but what happened in, when he died in 1926 as a result of various legal and technical complications, the Java sisters never received an inheritance at all. They struggled along as best they could until the day when Anna Javis's eyes began to get dim, and finally she was nearly as sightless as her sister, and by this time few people remembered that the shriveling little old lady once had been an internationally known figure. No one paid any heed to the comings or goings of the woman anymore. Isn't that sad? A person that was so out in the forefront, blessing so many people, providing for so many people, and now there was nobody was left for them.
No one paid any heed to the comings or goings of the woman, but the doctor that she finally consulted about her eyes was worried after he had sent her home without hope of ever regaining the full use of her eyesight. He asked a welfare worker to go around to find out if Miss Jarvis was getting proper care, not re realizing that it was her responsibility to do the caring for someone who was worse off than herself. There in a big chilly house, the investigator found the true case of the blind leading the blind, and the two invalid sisters were near starvation when they were found. Anna Jarvis, the spinster who founded Mother's Day over 60 years ago, seemed doomed to a lonely and penniless old age. Miss Anna had suffered a nervous collapse and was sent to the city hospital. Elsa was cared for by social services until her death in 1941. And there the story might have ended with the woman who had devoted so many years of her life honoring the world's mothers, eventually dying alone and friendless. But word of Mrs. Jarvis's unhappy situation finally came to a lawyer who had known her from the time when he was a little boy. Thank God for little boys, you know? And he called together a few men and women who still felt a friendly regard for the now helpless old lady and dig down into their own pockets. They built up a huge fund enough to move her to a luxurious room in a sanitarium where every, her every whim would be provided for for the rest of her days. When the word got around about the way these sons and daughters of Philadelphia had rallied to help the founder of Mother's Day, other people started sending contributions for her welfare. Florists from every state in the nation and from Hawaii made voluntary gifts of money. The makers of Mother's Day cards also contributed to the cause. And some of the money donated was used to erect a memorial to Mother's Day and its founder. So widespread became the observance of Mother's Day that in 1934, the government issued a stamp bearing Whistler's portrait of his mother. It is indeed appropriate to have a day set aside for one for which we can pay tributes of love and reverence to the mother who brought us into the world, nursed us through childhood, and who loves us even to their death. Mothers are honored because their children are the first thought and care. They are the ones to cheer us in our successes and, con and console us in our defeats. We think of millions of mothers who saw their sons march out to war. Many of them never came back. Others returned maimed for life. True, the sacrifice of the boys was great. Equally so was the sacrifice and heartaches and tears of the mothers left at home to pray and wait. And we know that from our own congregation when Tom and Steve were positioned in Afghanistan, and we prayed for them, and, and would, I'm sure as a mom, cared for and worried about her children. Let Mother's Day bring happiness where it can, and let it turn the key of loving remembrance upon the cherished days of the past, where that is our only recourse, and we will have observed the day in keeping with its high and, and lovely purpose. Yes, we welcome the institution of Mother's Day, but it is not more commendable to remember our mothers every day and not reserve our roses, gifts, and candies for one day in the year. So, Tom, keep giving those roses and those flowers and those candies. And every man here, your wife is a gift. You have, the mother of your children is a gift to you. Don't abuse it. Amen? Don't abuse it. Because you'll only find out one day when she's gone what you're missing. There are many lonely, almost forgotten mothers. If any of you need a ministry and you're asking God what you can do and you're in church and you're not doing anything, go visit someone in a nursing home. Become their adopted child. You'd be surprised how many times Linda has told me she began to cry after talking to some of the elders that she deals with every day that have absolutely nobody, nobody, and they're lonely, and they just need to talk to someone. So if you like to talk a lot, go see an elder. 
There are many lonely, almost forgotten mothers finding it hard to make ends meet whose long days would be considerably brightened if only thoughtfulness and ungrateful children would remember their obligations to those who gave them life. And that's where Mother's Day came from. Came through a giving, a heartfelt person who never thought of herself but always thought of others. And isn't that the true character of a mother? Amen? Sometimes we take it for granted. Well, if you have your Bibles, open up to Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs chapter 31. And I thank you all you kids for behaving yourself today. And uh, we'll try to get you a nice snack next week for behaving yourself today and sitting still and not causing a ruckus. Amen? Praise the Lord. So, uh, Proverbs 31 this morning, starting with verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Now, one of the things that were considered very precious in biblical days was precious stones. Precious stones would be like uh, gold today is to many. It was a commodity that you could treasure and pass down from generation to generation. And it was a wealth that you could accumulate and be able to share with your children and with your family. He says here, a virtuous woman, for her price, is far above that. So as a mother, or as children, remember your mother, how precious she is. Because one day, hopefully not in the near future, but in the future one day, you will be at a funeral parlor, and you'll be standing by a casket, and your mother will be in it, Motionless, speechless, lifeless. And it's a sad thing to stand at that coffin and say, I wish I could have. I wish I should have. A woman, now I know this is talking about a wife, but you know, a wife is a mother. And a virtuous woman her price is far above rubies. The woman that you have in your life is a gift. It truly is a gift. It says in uh, verse 11, The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. Verse 12, She will do good to him and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She's self-sacrificing. If you know anything about moms, this self-sacrificing. I couldn't begin to tell you the times when, uh, you see, when I, we were growing up, my father loved sweets. And uh, we had, uh, we had Bernicke Pies. Remember Bernicke Pies? It was right on Kempton Street, right? Wasn't that Bernicke Pies, I believe it was? And uh, they made the best Boston cream pie you ever tasted. It's not like today. Today is a, well, it's not even filled right, and it's only about this thick, you know. Boston cream pies were like this thick, man. Remember that, Joe? And I mean, they were really, and they were freshly baked right there. Am I making you hungry? Some of you are drooling a little bit over here, you know. But um, I'll wait till we settle down. Okay. And so I remember there'd be times my mom would, there'd be one piece left. And I'd say, is there any cake left? And my mom would say, yep, there's only one piece left. I'd say, oh, do you want it, mom? And she'd say, oh, no, no, I've, I've had my share. You can have it. And even though she may have wanted that piece of pie, even though she desired to have that pie, she was willing to lay down her desire for me. 
How many ever remember some thoughts like that about your mom? Willing to put aside her own wanting of something for you. She, in verse um, 15, she rises also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and portion of her to her handmaids. She considers the field and pays it with fruit of her hands. She plants a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengthen her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. Many times our mothers would stay up late ironing and doing laundry and doing all kinds of things to make sure that we had clean clothes the next day for school. She always made sure there was a meal on the table. Always made sure, amen, especially if you were Portuguese. I mean, Portuguese can eat, and I'll tell you, and they, they're always making something, and they, you're always eating. I, I've never walked into a Portuguese house and never said, here, eat, here, eat, here, you know, I have something to eat, you want something to eat? And it, it's like that with my grandmother, too. You go in there, hey, I have something to eat, hey, I have something to eat, always wanting something to eat, you know? Uh, very kind and loving and giving. She layeth her hands to the spindle and hands hold the distaff. She stretched out her hand to the poor, yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. How many times my mother would give to different people on the street or if she, she knew a neighbor needed something. Amen? Remember that, Joe? Uh, our mothers would, you know, make a little extra or something, say, go give this to so and so. Go, you know, go, go give a little bit of this. And even when it was tough and it, was, it wasn't easy back then, you know, my dad always had two jobs. I mean, you know, he, he, it wasn't easy all the time. Um, but he, uh, he would do those things, and my mom would, would do those things. And when we were young, we never locked our doors. I mean, our doors were always open, you know, and we didn't have to fear anyone coming in to steal because people had a fear of the Lord back then. We had the Ten Commandments. We had our, most of us were Catholic, and we respected one another. You know what I'm saying? But today it's different. She's not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. And that means they were double garmented. How many times you, you know, you're ready to go outside, you must say, wait, come over here. Put the scarf on, put the hat on, put the gloves on, you know, make sure you had a sweater on under your coat, make sure you were warm. All those little things that we take for granted and kids take for granted today. It says her husband is known in the, in the gates and when he sitteth among the elders of the land, she maketh fine linen and selleth it and, and, and delivereth girdles unto the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing, and that's the truth. Mothers have strength and honor. Yes, are there things that moms do, you know, especially as they're older and we get older? Yes. Are there things that maybe, especially if they don't serve the Lord? Yes. But apart from all of that, what's the one thing that God says in the Word to do? Honor your mother and father. Now, it doesn't mean you have to do everything they say, especially if it's ungodly, but you honor them. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. Strength and honor are her clothing. Because you can only do what you've been doing that has been done. She honored her parents, and now she's receiving honor. You ever talk to someone, they have no authority? They say things, but they have no authority behind it because they have no experience. Oh, they could tell you everything it is about a gun and you know the caliber and all that stuff and the barrel and give you all the dimensions, but never fire a gun. Never know what it's, what it's like to fire a gun. And you don't really know until you fire a gun. And it's the same way with everything in life. You never know. You know, some of you say, well, I don't have a mom, and you know, but you know what? You do have a mom, okay? And if you just open up your heart and let someone be your mom, they're there for you. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and her tongue is the law of kindness. When I read that scripture this morning, I thought of my mom. If you ever met my mom, you would say that she was the kindest person that she knows. 
that you know. My wife said that to me the other day. She says, you're the kindest person I, I have ever known. No, my mom was the kindest person. And I think Joe would attest to that. Um, and it's so cool that I got somebody, you know, my, my wife only knew my, wife, my mom the last, what, 10 years maybe? Five years, five or 10 years when we were married before she passed away. But Joe knows my mom from way back. Never unkind word. Um, special. She looketh well to the ways of her household. Even when the household didn't treat her right. You know, uh, a mother's love is just beyond compare. Her children... Oh, she eateth not the bread of idleness. That's true. Mothers always seem to have something to do. You come home, she's vacuuming. You come home, she's washing the floor. You come home, she's washing clothes. You come home, she's cooking. You know, doing something, going to work, whatever it was. Always busy. And I remember Joe's mother was the same way. Always busy, constantly busy. Taking care of the kids, making sure, you know, uh, things were going right and in the family too and it says, many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Listen to that. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. She shall be praised. Women that know the Lord and have children... Their children should be so appreciative. And I know sometimes they're not because it clashes. The culture clashes with the things of God. The, the culture sets an example, and it clashes with what moms want the best for their children. If I was to ask you a question, how many of you, how many of you here today want your kids to be dropouts? How many of your kids want your... How many, uh, little Isaac raises his hand. <laughs> how many of you want your kids to be drug addicts? How many, how many would be proud to have a son as a drug addict or a daughter as a drug addict? How about a prostitute? How many would be proud of their children to be away from God? No, nobody would. Nobody grows up to want to be a prostitute. No one said, gets up one, one day in school and says, goes to a guidance counselor and says, hey, I want to be a prostitute. Or, hey, I want to be so stuck on drugs that I, I die and they have to bring me back to life three times a week. Nobody wants that. And yet children take their parents for granted, some of them. Children sometimes disrespect their parents. Children sometimes think they know more than their parents. Usually that doesn't happen until 16, but it's happening earlier and, and earlier in life. And they don't understand that when a, when a parent is trying to do the best for their children by the wisdom that they have grown from and the experience called life that they have that you don't have as children. You should be thanking God for it has been their prayers, it has been their wisdom, it has been their direction that has kept you from real, real bad things. We need to respect our mothers. It's Mother's Day. And when we equate Mother's Day, we, we equate it with restaurants and going out to eat. No, that's just a perk. But, but you know, to understand mothers and understand that sometimes mothers are rough, sometimes they're tough, and mothers 
are not supposed to be your friends. They're your mother. Now, you can do play games together and do stuff together, but always remember to hold that respect that that is your mom, that she's your mother. Amen. She, she, she's not your pal. She's your mother. And, and I, I really blame a lot of mothers that try to be friends with their, their kids. You're not their friends. You're their mother. And once you become their friends, then you have no more authority. Because that authority goes out the window because now they just look at you as a friend. And so they don't have to listen to you. They don't have to do the things that you, you want them to. I mean, you know, as a kid, there were things that I had to do that I didn't like to do. I had to take out the garbage. Wow. <laughs> right? What a big chore that is. Okay. Now, I know I was a little spoiled. My wife tells me that all the time. Because I didn't make my own bed. My mom made my bed for me. I'm guilty. Right? Some of you are just not saying anything, but God, you know, mothers made your bed too. I didn't do my own laundry growing up. My mom did my laundry. When I came home late from, from something, it wasn't me that warmed up my own meal in the microwave or in the oven. It was my mom who did it for me. And when I really wanted something real bad that I was afraid to ask my dad, because he had a famous word, no. It was my mom that would be an uh, intermediate for me. We'd go to my dad and work on him with only persuasive powers that mothers have. But what a gift a mother is. What a true gift a mother is. Now, I came to have two moms in my life. I had Linda's mom. And Linda's mom was the opposite of my mom. My mom was very quiet, very meek. You know, but her mom was very boisterous, very loud. You know, she's the type of person that would put a lampshade on her head and dance on tables to make people laugh. You know, that was her personality. Okay. She was very, very outspoken. Uh, could be dangerous at times because she was Italian and Portuguese and French. But I got close to my mother-in-law, too. She loved me. And we had the same birthday on the same day. Yeah, which was neat. And it was so, it was so cool because my mother's sister and I had the same birthday. And after she passed away, I had her mother on the same day. And then for a long time, there was nobody with the same birthday as me. And then Jen has the same birthday as me, though she's too young to be my mom. But we celebrate our birthdays together. And uh, that's pretty neat how God takes away one, you know, and then you have another one. That's pretty, that's not coincidental. Though. I mean, three birthdays on the same day, you know. Three, but anyway, but mothers are special. This is a special day. Mama Claire, you are special. You are special to all of us, and we, we have the highest respect for you, and we love you. And uh, you are a part of us and always will be. And uh, we appreciate you as a mom, as a grandmom, as a great-grandma. And... Uh, I consider you my grandma because I did
didn't get to know my grandma. This was my mother's side for a short time till I was 18. And you know how it is when you get older, you don't want to spend time with your grandma and grandpa. You, know, you want to go do your own thing, but you know what? When they're gone, it's too late. A virtuous woman is a mother. Now, I'm not yelling and screaming at you, talking about your sin this morning. But I'm talking to you about virtue. I'm talking to you about what a real mom is. Do we have bad memories of mom? Sure. There's something maybe your mom did you didn't like? Sure. Are there some moms worse than other moms? Yeah. Are there moms that can be mean? Yeah. But you know something? Moms have a tender heart to really fix everything fast. Isn't that true? They want to fix things fast. I remember a time, uh, I didn't see this, thank God. But I remember Linda telling me the story about her brother. And uh, they, were at a, they were at a table having a meal, and her brother was aggravating her mother for something. I don't know, I don't know what he was doing, but Linda just shakes her shoulders because she, she tries to stay away as far as possible when these things happen. And my mother-in-law, I got mad at Johnny. Of course, Johnny, it's very easy to get mad at him for different things. Uh, and uh, she took a fork and stuck it in his hand. And see, that's why if you, if you ever, don't get Italians mad. Okay? Okay? You, you don't want to get Italians mad. Okay? Uh, then after, probably gave him a Band-Aid for it and probably tried to heal his hand, whatever it was. Uh, but you have to understand, sometimes, uh, you know, mothers do things and it seems downright mean, but, you know, they really try to do it for our protection because they love us. And I remember uh, my mother-in-law sitting around telling us, hey, Johnny, remember when you were a kid, I used to tie you to the clothesline with a harness? You know, because the, the, the rolling kind, that could go back and forth so he, could, he wouldn't run out in the street. She put a harness and tied him in it. I mean, today you, you get called DSS on you, you know what I mean? But that's why he used to go out and play. And uh, you used to, was it you that your mom used to put out on the, on the porch? She used to bundle her up and put her in a in her carriage and put her on the porch. I mean, you can't do that today. <laughs> but these things that moms do, that's because they love us, and they're special. And I want to I want to honor all of you moms today, and say thank you for taking care of your kids. Thank you for what you do. And dads, help help mom. Help mom. Don't think it's just the woman's work. It's only for the woman to take care of the children. No. Children are looking to you for character and integrity, men. They're looking for you to back your back your back your wife and and be, and to um, stabilize the family with your integrity and your character. And the, the mothers are the ones that bring them up emotionally and give them the emotional hugs and kisses. And the fathers do too, but not as much, you know, because we don't want to seem like we're sissies, you know. But, um, but aren't you glad we have a heavenly father who loves us? We're his children. He can be stern at times, but he can be loving. He can be kind. He can be gentle. He can be very forceful. And I know the scripture that says he, God takes no, no, no joy in the death of, a wicked, of the wicked. God doesn't rejoice and go, aha, you wicked thing, you're dead now, good for you, goodbye. No. Because God loves everyone. He hates what we do sometimes. So, I just want to say that thank you, thank you, mothers, because you put up with so much that you don't even say. You, don't, you put up with so much that people don't see. 
when you're home alone with your children. And some of you get disrespectful remarks from your children. But you just keep on loving them. You keep on praying for them. And God will do a great thing. Amen? I was reading this morning in, in, um, in one of the Gospels, and Jesus said, if you, do, if you love mother, father, children, sisters, brothers, even your own self, more than me, you cannot be my disciple. But society is teaching us to love ourselves, your best life now, all this other baloney. But Jesus said to love your own, not to love your own life. He says you are to hate. Now that word hate doesn't mean what it means, what we think it means. It means to love less. If you don't love yourself less, you're not worthy of Jesus. You can speak in tongues all fluently. You can be all flowery and mystical and uh, have all these clouds around you and all these little bells ringing above your head and you think it's glory land. But let me tell you something. If you're living only for yourself and you're selfish, guess what? You can't be his disciple. You can't be a Christian. No way. And we have the best example of being a Christian in the life of a Real mom. The sacrifice, the laying down of their life, the giving that they do. Does it happen with every family? Unfortunately, no. Some moms, they don't give, they take. There's some moms that we want to forget. But you know what? We still have people in our lives that are great influences. And if anything, we should follow those examples. We should follow those rules. And I remember Joe's sister, Linda, if she's watching, God bless you. I remember Trent and Bubba when they were small. Boy, we, we, we really tortured them kids, didn't we? <laughs> we used to dog on those kids, man, you know, because we, we were older, you know, we used to make them fight and do all kinds of stuff. And, and I, hope we'd, I hope they're not watching because they're older now and they can really beat on us now as we're older. And uh, I remember Linda, the sacrifice that she made for her children, the things that she did for her children, how much love there was. And it's a good day today. It's a day to remember our moms, the good things. There's, there's a lot of bad things, but you know what? Just toss it aside. Just toss those bad things aside and just remember the good things. One of the good things is that you're sitting here today because of her. If it wasn't for her, you wouldn't be born. If you wouldn't be born, you wouldn't have kids. You wouldn't have a husband. Come on. We wouldn't have a church. You wouldn't have a pastor. Yay. This is kind of a just sober thing time of thinking, reflecting. I know I miss my mom. And it's funny because, you know, <clears throat> there'll be times I'll be somewhere and um, my mom always wore oil of Olay. And oil of Olay has a certain distinct smell. And I remember this lady walked by one time and she had that on her and she smelled just like my mom. Brought tears to my eyes. And I, I was just saying, wow, how I miss that, how I miss that. And ever since I was a little boy, if my mom wanted me to go to sleep and I wouldn't go to sleep, she'd come and rub my head. You know, I'd put my head in her lap and, you know, today Linda would rub my head sometimes. And uh, it brings me back to the thoughts of, of those things. And, you know, I thank God for my mom. Some of us had moms that, my mom died at 67. Some had moms die a lot earlier. But you know what? At least you had one. And you could enjoy them for a certain amount of time. And uh, 
I thank God for you mothers. I thank God for each and every one of your sacrifices for your kids. And I've seen it. In this assembly, I've seen it. I've seen Sister Lucy hop on a plane and get down there to Texas because something was going on and she wanted to be there for her children, let them know that she cares and she loves them. Amen? So enjoy this Mother's Day, whatever you're doing. Is, any, is anyone going out for Mother's Day? No one's going out? You're not going out? Louis's not taking you out. Is he working today? He's making is he at the is he at the shop today? Is it open? Oh. You don't care about Louis? <laughs> as long as I have my pizza and my, my kids, I don't care about Louis. That's all right. Louis can say. Hey Louis, are you watching? I told you to watch today. Are you watching, Louis? No. He gave you a nice present? What did he give you? A w Apple Watch? An Apple, an Apple Watch. An Apple Watch. Well, ask him what he did wrong. I mean, no. <laughs> you have a list that long? I'm sure you can have a list on you, too. But go out today and enjoy your mom. Just hug her. Amen? Just go visit her. Say hello. Well, that's all I got for you today. To enjoy the love that God has put in our hearts for our moms. And I can tell you, there's not a day that goes by that I don't miss my mom. I do. But you know what takes the pain away and what takes the loneliness away? Is moms like some of you. Like Mama Claire and others that we kind of just, you know, appreciate your love and your concern for us. And so that's all I want to share today. Happy Mother's Day. And be blessed. Don't be sad. Be blessed for all that God's doing. Amen? Before we close, you have any testimony about your mom? You want to share something about your mom? Nobody? Okay, let's start this all over again. I'm going to... Okay, Alicia, come on up. 